Hey guys, welcome to, I believe this is game three or game four, I've lost track, of the second set of August 6th North American Team Battles. Bottom left hand corner, we have Dragon. I believe you can catch his Twitch channel at DragonBW. If not, check the description. That is where you'll find his Twitch information. Upper left hand corner, we have Crossy as the Orange Zerg. And Crossy thus far has just been devastating everybody he's gone up against. With some very, honestly, I've been enjoying his build orders. This is also a privilege because it, this is on good night. And this is a strong contender to win the Team Liquid. Or I don't think it's Team Liquid, actually. It's the New Worlds map contest on TeamLiquid.net. So if you go to TL.net, I'm not sure if it's still running or not. Or a winner is declared. My understanding is, is whoever wins this competition, they may end up having a map in ASL or in some professional Korean tournaments and things. So it's super exciting. This was, I believe, a map made by Crystal Drag. The most interesting feature, in my opinion, is this middle section where you have a double gas, which is somewhat rare. A handful of minerals, but really the interesting feature is, again, if you can sneak your cheese, is getting that double gas. Otherwise, a lot of ramps. This is the third base and kind of a kind of a defensive. It feels like you get three bases pretty easily defended, almost Shakura's Temple style. And then there's a lot of resources on the map otherwise, and some opportunity for potential economic cheese. This time we are seeing a pool first opener, which is surprising on a four player map from Crossy. So opening spawning pool wants to get aggressive with those Zerglings first. We are seeing a forge first build. And actually I take it back. I saw blue dragon. This isn't dragon. This is Jayun. <laughs> Jayun is, this is the beta art, go figure. So Jayun has been playing a lot of Protoss lately. He is a former top North American Zerg, and he might be one of the guys that can take Crossy down because he's really got... I think he's one of those guys that can get in Zerg's head, obviously, because he used to play Zerg. And oftentimes, he's one of the guys that I watch stream more often than pretty much anybody, and he has really strong Protoss play. He has been kind of flipping between this and Zerg. I think he's been sticking with Protoss more recently. Missing an opportunity to go ahead and... Annoy that hatchery for a second. It looks like he's trying to delay those Zerglings so he can get his cannons established. He does have two photon cannons warping in. You can see just doing a little blockade, and here's kind of the dance. He wants to make sure he keeps that probe alive to scout, but also make sure he has times to get those, those cannons down. Now he's leading those Zerglings out to the right, wants to try to get some distance so he can end around and maybe sneak in, see extractor timings, things like that. Maybe see a third base. Doing a pretty good job. Jayun, I, I met him in person when he was a student at UCSD. And he is, first of all, an awesome person, I will say. He's just an awesome dude. He's like really intelligent, really well-spoken. He has a lot of great tutorial content. Looks like we are seeing a third hatch, by the way, at the 12 o'clock location. He's also just an incredible uh, an incredible Brood War player. And one of my secret fantasies is that we can get some sort of tournament in Southern, he's actually out in Seattle these days. Um, not sure if he wants me to reveal that information. Oh, he says it on stream, so never mind. Public information at this stage. He's up in the nor Pacific Northwest, and I'm not saying exactly where. That's a huge city, anyway. Now I feel a little embarrassed. I'm like sheepish, it's like, oh, did I say something I shouldn't have? The simulator down by the way. Nexus is starting to warp in Gateway uh, along that edge. Anyway, one of my I've always wanted to have these guys do like an outdoor tournament someplace, just so people could see just how incredibly skilled they are. And Jayun in particular, because watching him play firsthand is it's really fun to watch because he's just. Incredible amount of speed, a lot of focus. The other guy that's really fun to watch uh, out there is Machine. Anyway, another probe scout moving out. Looks like he wants to go ahead and try to find out whether there's a third hatch out there or whether he's going up against some form of two hatch play. These Zerglings have done a fantastic job boxing this probe out. And that is yet a... Let's see if I can find the other Zergling. So I believe that's two kills. <laughs> that last Zergling it. Come on. But I believe that's two kills. Another probe scout moving out. That Overlord seeing it. Going to try to sneak out into the darkness because having sc early scouting information against your Zerg opponent is critical. Cybernetic scores down. I would not be surprised to see a Stargate from Jayun. Simulator up, layer warping in. So it looks like we're looking at some form of three. I assume we might see three hatch mutilisk here, actually. Zerglings spreading out all over the place. This probe looks like it has initially managed to sneak by. That Zergling finally spotting it. The rest of the Zerglings across the minimap descending now. We do see a Citadel of a Dune being built rather than a Stargate, which could be troublesome. And Crossy just incredibly, doing an incredible job denying all this scouting information. Two Zelts moving forward. 
to try to engage these Zerglings. And again, just press forward and try to find something out. We It is going to be three Hatch Mutalisk. Spire is down. And this... Keep in mind, this was Citadel before Stargate. And now a Templar Archives as well. This is going to be a lot of Mutalisks very rapidly. And this is one of those situations where... Did that Zerg... I might have missed that Probe Scout getting picked off yet again. Maybe it cycled back. I'm not sure. This is one of those situations, and it looks like it's going to be actually 4-hatch. Where you can produce a lot of Mutalisks rapidly. Although there wasn't a second, a, similar, a second gas taken to really produce like maximum amount of Mutalisks to follow this up. But usually you want that Stargate out a little bit earlier so you can have more Corsairs in the air to kind of counter it. I believe by the time this initial Corsair is going to walk up and see the scouting information, there's already going to be Mutalisks effectively up in the air. So first of all, no Overlord kill. But secondarily, there's going to be a bit of a lag where there's going to be kind of cannon dedication that needs to happen. The Zergling's trying to sneak by. The Corsair is moving out. This is going to be the, kind of the critical moments here. Mutalisks are being built. And it looks like Jayun's going to go ahead and dive to this natural expansion. I'm not sure how much information he's... I think he was hoping to see whether the second assimilator was up, because usually that's a big indicator. He's going to see additional hatchery here. Second assimilator moving out towards the main. Is actually engaging the spire, but this Corsair is... Hmm, let's see if it donates its life, because there's the Mutalisks now. Jayun now backing off. He does have a second Corsair. Ha also has the cannon warping in. At both his natural and his main. So Corsair did its job, kept Jayun in the match. However... Crossy, by denying a lot of that information, has felt very comfortable going ahead and just plopping down all sorts of hatcheries. He's got two at the 12 o'clock location. Actually working on Carapace upgrade. He's got two at his natural. So he's up at essentially five hatch. But it looks like rather than doing the typical thing, going five hatch Hydra, he's just going to stick to more of a Mutalisk heavy build. Upgrading Carapace and wanting to just own the air. And this is, again... Not typical play. Now going up to six hatch even. So it's going to be six hydra, six hatch hydra, muta combo in the mid game. Level one weapons is not being upgraded. So I believe that air superiority is going to be held by Crossy for a considerable amount of time. And you saw that Dark Templar immediately got repelled. Jayun not able to get any information. He does have a decent Corsair fleet. What I'm looking for is a little bit more, uh, this is kind of the, will be the big indicator. I'm wondering if Crossy's going to wait for that level one carapace to finish before he kind of fills out more, mu more, more mutalisks in the in-between. But what this does provide him is a large degree of flexibility in army composition. Where if Jayun overproduces in the air, he can just go hydralisks on the ground. And if he overproduces on the ground, he can kind of switch mutalisks to the air and go for backstabs. A lot of flexibility in this style of play. Mutalisks going up to that natural expansion, able to get two probe kills right there, looking for a third. The Corsair's now engaging, and the Scourge now moving in, looking to pick off something in the air. Nice micro by Jayun, getting kind of a hit here and there. You can just see the micro on both players. is just absolutely fantastic. Dark Templar kind of hovering in between, and I like what I've seen Jayun do this before, where he, where he doesn't get initial damage done, with that Dark Templar. And so what he'll do, it looks like he's going to go ahead and open up his front door. Does have a lot of High Templar down with some Psy Storm, Kind of the catch-all for army comp. But he'll use this Dark Templar kind of as a midfield scout. Instead of his Corsairs. Crossy going ahead and grabbing an additional hatchery. He was already economically ahead, but... This will put him even further ahead. More gateways have filled out for Jayun. Getting some Dragoons in midfield. He's not going to feel very comfortable pressing forward until he gets a robotics facility, most likely. And observers. Mostly because he just doesn't have a, a large amount of information. Kind of checking out that 9 o'clock location with that Dark Templar in the meantime. Also getting the Calderon Amulet. Which I think, because he know Because he's, I think, seen the... The build and knows kind of his situation. He wants to have Psystorm as kind of that thing in between. I think I missed a Scourge landing on something. Heard the sound effect in the background. A lot more gateways being plopped down. 
for Jayun, which is exactly what he needs. And he looks like he's going to try to fill out this army. So he's going to go Dragoon Corsair. He does have level 1 weapons. Looks like another Scourge diving into that natural expansion getting wiped out. But in the interim, Crossy has established his fourth base. He's got a lot of Hydralisks everywhere. Lurker Tech is now up. And he's going to have a sizable Mutalisk force. And again, filling this out with Mutalisks. Just as Jayun's starting to move out with a Dragoon Corsair army. This is going to put a lot of pressure on the Psy Storm of Jayun. He needs to hit those Psy Storms and they need to do work for him. Otherwise, and the other critical thing is he needs to protect those High Templar against those Mutalisks. That's what these Dragoons and Corsairs are here to do. So this is going, basically this is going to be a test. Dark Templar briefly sneaking in, spotting that base, seeing that it's not saturated. Overlord spotted, it looks like he's going to chase that up. But basically this is going to be a test of how well, one, can Jayun protect his High Templar, and two, how effective are his Psy Storms? Mutalisks going in and crushing this third base. The Corsairs diving in, looking for engagement, but with all of the Scourge there as well, and actually, with enough Mutalists, he's like, well, I'm just going to go ahead and engage. Now I've got your Corsairs pinned back by those Scourge. And your Dragoons are completely out of position. I'm just going to go in and wreak havoc at your main. Now the Dragoon's pushing in. The Scourge looks like a, one of them landed. And we're able to take out one of those Corsairs. But you can just see that threat of having that air control. And how much that's delaying that third base. The Corsair is re-engaging, but here, here's the thing. With that level 1 armor, those Mutalists probably could swing around and maybe even just pick off a Corsair. Crossy, with a formidable army, starting to press forward. Jayun doesn't have the supply he really wants. Again, he's got all sorts of energy on these High Templar. Starting to creep forward. It's going to come down to these Psy Storms as to whether he can really press into this match and win it or not. Now grabbing that Nexus, those Mutalisks are swinging around. They're going to probably need to come back and defend. We'll see. Looks like Crossy's just going to send them down, seeing that this army is fully dedicated, and knowing that Lurkers are actually just going to delay this for an extreme period of time. Crossy just really playing this. So engaging, he's like, okay, you're up there. You can't go through my Lurker army. That's going to delay you. So I'm just going to go ahead and again deny your third, and again just go ahead and dive into your main that no longer has cannons, and potentially win the game here. Jayun running into a gigantic SimCity to the north, might be able to get a lot of Overlord kills, good Psystrom on the Hydralisks, but while that's happening, he is just getting devastated at his main, so he needs to effectively win with the army he has on the ground, and Crossy, with additional bases, this mess right there, I think is going to end up in a advantageous situation overall. And continues to rain down destruction on those Mutalists. Jayun is not turning around. He's like, okay, I got to do it with this army I've got. He's got all sorts of upgrades. Lurker is trying to buy himself some time by morphing on the ground. The Hydalisks engaging from that back edge. Some beautiful side storms wiping them out. But now the Dragoon's marching into this 12 o'clock base. There are three hatcheries here. As well as a Hydralisk den. That main has been completely devastated. The Hydralisk is now moving out to the natural expansion. Trying to get what damage done they can there. And rapidly. One hatchery down. This hatchery going to be wiped out as well. But the Mutalisks are just taking out every single probe that's out there. And there's no third base. Crossy now engaging with the leftovers of these armies. It looks like the Zerglings able to get on top of those Dragoons. And the Dragoons a bit spread out. Psy Storms are blanketing these Hydralisks, however. But it looks like there's not... A lot of High Templar left. More Zealots are starting to creep forward to try to engage the rest of this army. Still a handful of Dragoons engaging at the 12 o'clock, but this army from Jayun is slowly dwindling. This is on Crossy's side of the map. And problematically, Jayun doesn't have a, a sizable economy after the Mutalisks have continued to wreak havoc at the natural and the main to really feel, to fill out and build reinforcements. So now the Hydralisks at that natural expansion, well, they're still standing. The Dragoon's trying to press in there. The Sunken Colony is pounding away at them. There's still things that needed to be cleaned up here at the 12 o'clock. And it's turning into an elimination match between Mutalisks just doing all sorts of damage. Jayun down to 12 probes at the second. Crossy, if he can hold off, he will win. 
dropping all sorts of sunken colonies. That is, four, well, two sunken colonies are going to come online momentarily. Three sunken colonies are going to come online. Sorry, two, and then th I did count that right. And two more are coming along that back end. If he can, Crossy can get some Zerglings out. Maybe he'll recover this. Now the Mutalisks rejoining the front and engaging here. Still more Dragoons are pressing forward to try to engage the Corsairs rejoining. It's turning into an elimination match both directions. Creep Colony manages to get up. It's not going to last very long, though. The Corsairs are now unopposed. So they're starting to take Overlords out overhead. I'm not sure that's going to make much, more, much of a difference, though. Two more Sultan Colonies there. They're quickly getting taken out. Maybe if Crossy can build drones at the various locations he still holds to keep his economy up. Drones coming off the line to fight. And Jayun continuing to press into this. He's actually managed to kill a considerable amount of drones himself. He's still well behind economically. But Crossy, with what Hydralisks he has left, with what semblance of economy he has left, pushing into Jayun and pushing what's the remnants of that army back. And now it's almost like a reset. But as far as being able to rapidly rebuild, Zerg tends to win those engagements. Still two drones here at the 12 o'clock location. And actually, no, I was going to say, is, are we going to see a drone refill? But it looks like Crossy just wants to end it, building more Hydralisks. Main's still pretty well saturated. The natural expansion's decently saturated as Crossy's kind of regrouping things. Some observers are peeking up to go ahead and see, uh, get a good look at that saturation. Single Zergling peaking, seeing that third is not established. It's going to get wiped out. So both players running with a shattered economy. And it's almost like we're back to the, the early stages of the game. Lurkers being built. I like this play from Crossy. If he can plant some Lurkers, that'll buy himself some time. Because I almost feel like the attacks of Protoss have to come in waves based on when Psystorm is available with those High Templar. Corsair is still scouting around. Try to sneak things out. One thing that is in Jayun's advantage is he's got level 2 weapons, level 2 armor. So he does have an upgrade advantage. Versus just level 2 weapons comparatively. He has managed to get... Looks like some probes back out. Going to end up losing this High Templar in the front. But Crossy, I just, yeah, feel like he's going to be able to just rebuild too rapidly. Another High Templar moving forward. Is it going to get picked off before it storms? It does. And now that front door being tacked away at by Crossy's Hydralisks. More Dragoons gathering up. And some Lurkers in the background. I thought there was going to be defensive, but instead being aggressive. Corsairs trying to get what they can done. And pick off Overlords. That actually is going to supply block Crossy. Which gives Jayun another opportunity to sneak back in this match if that Overlord actually dies. Maybe. Looks like the Hydralisks are going to be able to save it. More High Templar being produced. Main is looking very thin for Jayun. Natural Expansion is still holding. It's going to be a while before he's got a, a sizable enough army to go establish a base. In the meantime, Crossy's main's looking thin. His natural expansion is there, but he's got that 12 o'clock base that's pretty decently saturated. The Corsair is going to sneak up in that upper right hand corner. It looks like they are going to be able to get two additional overlords. Crossy poking at this front door. Both players kind of licking their wounds and kind of getting a look at the situation. A Dark Templar... Sneaking in a shuttle in the midst of this. There is an overlord that could scout this. It might, given the positioning, and looks like two overlords at the natural expansion, still no speed upgrade. And, oh man, Jayun. Okay, he's, it's spotted now. High Templar misrallied, I think. Maybe it got a side storm off. But this is dropping in the main. It might be able to get, first of all, a lot of drone kills. But secondarily, maybe in some tech done. Okay, overlord speed is upgraded. Wasn't entirely sure or not. Those Corsair are actually picking away at those overlords in that bottom right-hand corner. Still getting... This is every Dark Templar's heroic dream, right? Getting Going in the probe lines, getting these kills. Observer getting picked off, but not before several drones getting picked off in the main. Doing some economic damage there. Still, I'm concerned from, for Jayun's ability to be able to push out and get an additional base somewhere out on the map. Trying to side storm right there. Crossy sneaking right past it, picking off yet another High Templar. He's been so strong in all of these matches against Protoss. 
It's just absolutely devastating those those uh, High Templar lines. Just threading the needle, picking them off. More lurkers gathering up on the front. Crossy sneaking again, one, trying to find High Templar to pick off. Another beautiful Psy Storm. And so Jan's going to have to bust out of this front, and he needs to go bust out of this, find another base, fend off everything Crossy's doing, slow down his economy, before he runs out of minerals. That's the game at this stage. Two more Lurkers getting picked off. Just poking away at this Psy Storm. Crossy again moving forward, able to pick off another High Templar. Whiff of a Psy Storm right there. He's just been so fantastic with that. This entire match. The Corsairs still in this corner looking for overlords that they might hunt and kill. Jayun actually all of a sudden has a supply lead, but his natural expansion is basically empty. His main also Dunzo. Hydro is pressing forward. It looks like they weren't quite being micro. They're still able to pick off another High Templar. So, oh, great Psy Storm on a grouping of Hydralisks right there. But Jayun's going to need to do something and do something rapidly. Zealot's loading up in this shuttle to try to move out. Now, Crossy, he still's got this 12 o'clock mining base, which means if he just holds on, he's going to end up winning this match despite being down on supply. Zealot's being dropped out midfield, kind of ferried. To provide some distraction. I think he's hoping to draw back some troops on the front. Or at least cut off reinforcements. And now, Jayun moving forward. This is going to be potentially the game deciding moment. Zealots pressing forward. It looks like those lurkers are being picked off. Nice Psy Storm on those Hydralisks. But Crossy still holding this front. It's so difficult to evict Zerg from these sort of positions. And there's not enough Psy Storm it looks like. To get anything else accomplished. The Zealot's running through to the 12 o'clock. Crossy has pulled out his drones in the meantime. And Overlord's actually just sitting there. Getting a good look. I think he, he knows full well the situation. Lurker's continuing to press forward. Overlord's trying to get in the way. And Crossy down to 50 supply. Can't hold the contain. And Jayun has busted out. And with that, calls GG. Also, wanted to point out, 12 o'clock location. Zealots just devastating everything in the background. Well played by Jayun. I honestly thought that game was sealed for Crossy at certain points. I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of a rewind to show the Zealots sneaking through and getting all sorts of... Whoa. Game's freaking out there for a second. Go to time 16 so you can guys get get a look at those zealots sneaking across. The critical thing, though... <laughs> missed it again. All right, here we go. Too fast. The critical thing, though, is, is I don't know that, despite breaking out, that Jayun had enough resources to rebuild a Nexus. Let's try to keep an eye on these zealots this time as they're waking, making their way across. Times two. They do the march. doing the damage and yeah so all the drones flooding out Jayun pressing forward going ahead to clear and these zealots just going to go ahead and take these hatcheries down but here's the thing pausing 36 minerals here 20 minerals there he would have to distance mine to get that nexus up and I think there were still drones I think the problem, though, is, is even if he did break out, right now, n there's not enough bank for... There just isn't a sizable enough bank for Crossy to rebuild an army to stop this if this decided to attack. And I think that was the decision to GG, which I believe is a correct one. Because this is already wiped out, and I don't know that he has enough right now to even stop those zealots from making their way around. Well played by Jayun. What a game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Going to move on to the next set. Thanks for listening.